Welcome to this week's OK at Work with myself, Sarah Sawyer, and my colleague, Russell Berger, both attorneys at Offit Kerman. And this week, I figured I would bring a, a hot topic that is currently in the news today uh, to our OK at Work segment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't think you're familiar with, with this one, uh, Russell, but the Kite, the company Kite Baby, which is a baby clothing company, um, is facing a potential boycott right now um, based on a viral video from one of their employees who was terminated when they requested whether they could work remotely from the NICU after um, adopting a baby that was in the NICU. Um, so according to Kite Baby, you know, the background is according to Kite Baby's policy that someone like this employee would be entitled to two weeks of leave, um, you know, in this circumstance. And so they provided that leave. The employee asked for additional time, asked to work remotely from the hospital um, because their baby was was in the NICU and was denied and um, and terminated. So that employee took to the internet and now it has been on CNN, it has been on MSNBC, it's been on almost every news station and they're facing a boycott. So a pretty interesting situation here where, you know, kind of legal meets the practical, which we talk about a ton on this show. So what are your initial uh, impressions, Russell? Yeah, well, don't, don't get yourself boycotted is <laughs> usually a pretty good policy to live by. Um, no, well, so I mean, obviously, like there, there are various kinds of leaves around, uh, you know, parental leave, and and when you adopt, you're, you're entitled to the same protections as you would, um, you know, whether it's a natural birth by you or your partner, um, and it doesn't sound like those apply if the this employee only got two weeks of leave for some other company policy, um, which is relatively low, and it's probably why we see states like, uh, you know, here in Maryland, we have passed the. Um, uh, the paid family leave. It's not in effect yet. It's slowly grinding its way into place. So, you know, if that happened in Maryland in 2025 or 2026, um, there'd be six weeks of, of paid leave through that program in place anyway. But, you know, really from the employer standpoint, um, you know, I think what, what this really seems to highlight is even if there's not a legal obligation, and even if you've exhausted your policy, there's still probably ways to address a situation that, you know, that are better than, well, you're with your sick newborn baby in the hospital and you haven't come to work for three consecutive days. So we're going to terminate you. Like that's a very draconian response. And, you know, whether, and obviously when employers respond in that way, it's not likely to result in, um, you know, massive online notoriety and boycotts, but, um, you know, it does create, uh, a brand and a culture that um, you, know, you probably don't want for your business. I think an interesting one about this too is that um, Kite Baby is a baby clothing company. So I think that was probably where this got a lot of traction as well as, um, you know, it, it, in looking at that. And I think it's an interesting, um, you know, we have these conversations all the time with clients where, um, you know, we're, when we're putting together policies for them where there's like, you know, the, there's what's legal, what you can and can't do. And then there's the layering in of, you know, how you how you want your culture and how those things and those things really can go hand in hand, especially in these types of situations. And obviously, I don't have enough facts here and neither do you, Russell, to know really whether this was a legally compliant policy or not. Obviously, we're getting sound bites on, you know, on the news and trying to convey them here the best that we can. But I, I think it brings up an interesting point about that intersection between these two things. And, and, and that's kind of the point, like none of like the court of public opinion, like you're you're a baby clothing company. You re, you're a retail operation. You require the, you know, the you know, the community at large to buy your product and. All I know about Kite Baby is what you told me today. <laughs> so how likely am I buy, to buy Kite Baby versus some other brand at this point? You know, it 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 muddies the water for for you as an employer, especially when you're you're a B two C business as opposed to a B two B. Um, and you know, you don't really want that associated with your brand. And um, yeah, you know, even if it's legally compliant, like there's just there's you know, the ability to be creative and think through, you know, okay, well, we have policies, we have policies for a reason, we're supposed to follow those policies, and and that's a best practice. 
Um, but also like, well, if I follow this policy in this circumstance, it's going to create this other problem. So I should therefore deviate and come up with a third option, right? It is oftentimes like the practical way to approach it as opposed to, well, this is going to be a problem, but what am I going to do? I got to follow the policy and then, then you step in it. Yeah. And I think it's another, you know, another um, way to think about it as well is that if you're, yeah, you know, if you've got a policy in place and maybe you are deviating from it a lot, or maybe it's not really true to your culture, you should assume though that your managers and folks are going to probably follow that policy. So the CEO, when she came out and spoke on um, in response to this and things, seemed to kind of express some um, like, oh, we didn't quite handle this right. They're like, yeah, this is our policy, but you know, we should, you know, we should have thought through this more. But I think that's a, a, also a good point that all right, well maybe re-examine the policies as well because you can assume that people are going to follow you know follow them as written as well so yeah well and, and i think one of the other important things and it's, it's just more of a management skill is when you're managing people that are making decisions while well, you want to empower them to make decisions and and uh support them and have their back you also want them to feel comfortable coming to you where, when they say look i know i'm supposed to kind of stay in this lane but this doesn't feel like it's going to work right you know, I have some other ideas and you want, uh, you know, people you're managing to be able to bring that to you so that, you know, the road application of a policy doesn't end up in a bigger problem for the company than, um, you know, than, 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 you know, than it's worth in its first place. Yeah. Well, lots of good lessons here, uh, but uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Sarah.